Hi, my name is Sandy Bear, and I'm from the Vermont Institute of Community and International Involvement. And we are pleased tonight to present this wonderful artist on uh, architecture in Africa. Uh, and we have with us Diane Geyer, who was fortunate enough to bring her here to this town to exhibit her art and her film. And also with us is Eric Onyero, who is also from Vicky. And I'm going to allow uh, you to introduce our guest, right? Thank you. Diane. Thank you, Sandy. Um, so I met Amélie Sse. Um, through the International Women in Architecture organization, um, I think we said seven years ago. Um, and I mean, he's been a professional architect <coughs> for over 20 years um, in the field of management, restoration, conservation, and valorization of African heritage. We had made a connection, and over time, um, thought maybe, and she's and I invited her to Vermont for a week um, to bring her film on um, women's work in construction and earthen architecture in um, three West African countries, the Niger, the Cameroon, and the um, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting confused. Um, and her, she especially went into earthen architecture because of working with the women in construction, and it very much inspired her research as she went forward as an architect. She's worked for 15 years with UNESCO World Heritage um, on some of these projects, and she's made several films, as well as written books, especially for children, on what it means to um, create you know, hands-on and, and architecture and earthen constructions. Um, and so we're really happy to show the film. We've showed it um, at the U University of Vermont this week, um, but vi this Vicky program is very special, and we're happy that CCTA um, has been offering us this space. And that's my introduction for Amélie. Uh, tu veux dire quelque chose avant le film? No, you okay. are good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank so, you for coming. Thank you. We're happy to show the film. We want to show the whole film and then we'll um, have a discussion. Builders of Africa showcases and encourages the participation of women in construction, public works, engineering, town planning, rehabilitation, and the preservation of cultural heritage. The association helps promote women involved in building. Women Builders has the goal of broadcasting their expertise and integrating them as partners in land planning. Our organization, Batir et Développé, Build and Develop, proposes four programs, of which one is Women Builders. This program's objective is to help enhance women's image in construction. It spreads the knowledge of and promotes their expertise in the context of transferring knowledge and of sustainable development. The African continent is full of exceptional architectural typologies changing along ethnic lines. Earthen architecture is differentiated according to various construction techniques that depend on local geography and climate. Monumental, urban or rural, or even minimalist architecture vary along the lines of form, technique, and customs. Builders tell their stories through their expertise and their history. In the goal of bearing witness to these women's accomplishments, the Batir et Développé team suggested setting up an educational construction site to renovate and decorate an earthen home. The objective is to know and transmit expertise and to research best practices for sustainability, preservation, maintenance, and the promotion of iconic earthen architecture. 
Our film will take you to three countries to meet three different groups of people in which the women sometimes practice the same skills, mostly without knowing of each other. Usually, the women organize the tasks within a building site or to renovate an earthen construction. The most senior woman manages logistics. Another woman will be the project manager, handling the requirements and sometimes also participating in the labor. Each knowledge expert has a specialty. For example, preparing binding agents, mud coating, paints with natural pigments, and drawing graphics that may include relief engraving. They are the main players and teach the younger people. This expertise is transmitted from generation to generation. It is an intergenerational building site. This video tells the story of female builders in specific locations in Cameroon, Niger, Burkina Faso. In each location, they got together for an educational construction site that week after week turned into a true adventure. The Musgum live about 1,250 kilometers away from Yaoundé, Cameroon's capital, in Marwa, in the far north province of the country, on the banks of the Logon River at the border with Chad. They created a spectacular type of architecture that resembles a mortar shell called a teluk. The layout is a perfect circle. There is neither framework nor support of any type, nor a foundation. The shell is self-supporting. The Toulouse construction technique is that of clay and straw mortar architecture. Water is poured into earth along with suksuki, a specific plant, and cow or goat dung. The mixture is kneaded until it has good plasticity. Then it is turned into balls that are the building blocks of the construction. The women who work on this building mold it like a pottery piece and prove their dexterity in the field of earthen construction. The decorative moldings are used as a clever scaffolding and water runoff system, as well as a buttress. It is architectural handwriting. Women transmitted this expertise to men. The self-supporting dome can reach a height of 15 meters. The granary is the centerpiece of the compound. Each living unit has a specific purpose. The unit of the family chief, the wife, initiation or hiding place, cattle space, kitchen. The grouping is enclosed by a perimeter wall, protecting it from external attacks. The compound is spacious. There is one single door in the shape of a warrior's shield and a zenithal opening, a sort of chimney covered with a straw hat. Inside, the tuluk is decorated by women. The furnishing is shaped and built in, along with the wall. Alcoves, partitions, benches, beds, spaces for the cattle, and more. The Musgum Teluk architecture is proof of a true artistic exploration, as well through the choice of placement in a natural location, as through its mastery of shape and the attention to detail. However, these Musgum homes are threatened. Less and less of them are built, and the expertise is fast disappearing. What can we do? to sustain these truly self-supporting units that can be up to 15 meters high. In Western Niger, in the Tilaberi region, female builders work in the 14 islands of the Niger River. They hail from a variety of ethnicities, Songhai, Jerma, Zarma, Wogo, Hausa, Tuareg, Pearls, and Bellas. Their architectural practice includes earthen coatings and decorations. Every island has its own identity, thanks to the coatings prepared by these women. Hello. <laughs>
kelat beli Bang Awu wes nu barang bebeleng ni Yo mam boy Awu dan bus ni pam On the Ayoro Gugum Island, we set up another educational site. The local people decided to rehabilitate the earthen home of Jean Rouge, built in the 1970s. As elsewhere, construction tasks are distributed. Men handle the basic construction work and the women apply the coating and the decor. They also rehabilitate when needed. Each woman knows which task is assigned to her. The younger group observes the elders and learns. The first task is to make the coating. The women bring mud from the river to ensure that the water genies will make it solid and protect it. This river mud is mixed with dry earth from the soil, water, and manure. Those who know how to do it show the others how to knead the mixture. The mixture must rest an entire night. The next morning, more and more women, young girls and children, come either just to look on or to participate in the work. The island is crowded and the scene is colorful thanks to the various fabrics worn by the people. The mix of earth and manure, needed once more, is spread upon the house's facade. The women smooth this first coating, which must be smooth and even. It is left to dry for 24 hours before adding a second identical coat. It must be diligently smoothed out so that it is uniform. Now it's time to decorate the walls. The experts bought natural pigments in the market to create the colors. Vous avez ici l'argile, donc l'argile qu'on enlève du fleuve. L'argile qu'on enlève du fleuve. Ensuite, vous avez l'autre côté, donc une substance de couleur bleue et qui provient des fruits de d'acacia. Donc, c'est ça qu'on pile pour avoir cette substance bleue. 
Maintenant, on les mélange ensemble pour que ça donne une autre couleur donc, plus foncée. Donc, cette couleur grise qui a l'aspect du, du ciment. Et c'est ce, ce liquide-là qu'on fait passer sur les surfaces donc, de la maison. Ça permet de donner, de donner une couleur très jolie et ça permet aussi d'avoir de, 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 aussi des surfaces très lisses. The women also need to make a perfectly white coating, symbol of purity and renewal. To obtain this pure white, they mix limestone, pureed wheat, ash, and the juice of slimy leaves. Once the house is covered in white, Zelhi Amido, the decor specialist, draws geometric patterns and Suleiman does the animal and people drawings. <laughs> The house is done in a festive atmosphere. It is positively shining. The Muse Rouge Fuo or Jean Rouge House is also called the White House. In just eight days, thanks to the women's collective work, the house has regained its previous splendor. In Kandaji, the electrical dam project will submerge these Niger River artistic islands. How can we preserve this expertise? In Burkina Faso, in the Kasena region, land of the Gurunsi, a people located between the southern Burkina Faso border and northern Ghana, the fortified earthen architecture is exceptional. Tiebele is located 178 kilometers away from Ouagadougou, the country's capital in the Nahuri province. It is a rural town that is home to a royal court, representing the rich cultural heritage of the Kasena, elements linked to history and intangible cultural aspects form part of this space. At the entrance, the sacred hill and the sacred red fig tree. Inside, the sacred baobab tree, along with several areas of worship. The different architectural shapes, forms with double-lobed or triple-lobed forms, rectangles or cones, represent either living spaces or spaces with well-defined uses. The royal court is a true labyrinth. Low walls mark private spaces, partially open spaces, spaces open with codes known only to the court inhabitants. The relationship with the environment, the natural materials used, clay, laterite, binding agents, natural pigments, fibers, the presence of animals, the relationship with ancestors and the rituals form an important cultural space characteristic of this heritage. This can be called a link between heaven and earth. The Kasena have a unique and specific space for women. It's located to the west of the compound in order to respect the setting sun, symbolizing women as well as being associated with the moon. The home of a woman and her children is always spatially organized the same way, whatever the size. Its construction is usually circular with round units with flat roofs, which are joined together by groupings of two or three. This is called a double-lobed or triple-lobed shape. 
The first room could be a multifunctional room for living or sleeping when there is no third room. Its small semi-elliptical door marks it, along with a low wall protecting the space from water runoff or animals. To enter the home, yikes, you have to bend down and walk on all fours. This shows the earth its due respect and thanks it for holding the home, such symbolism. You also need to go down 20 centimeters so that the earth's coolness can spread to all the rooms, such ingenuity. This area is lit through a zenithal light located above the millstone for crushing grains. This light illuminates the well-organized interior and the smooth decorated walls. There is a pantry and built-in furniture, a bench, bed, piled up pottery. The second room is the kitchen, accessed through the first room, also through an elliptical door. The kitchen contains a hearth on two fixed legs and a movable one in order to change its width according to the size of the pot. There is also a granary. Smoke escapes through an opening in the roof over the hearth and also plays the role of zenithal lighting. The terrace roof is also multifunctional. It is used to dry grain and spices or as an outdoor bedroom. You can reach it by a wooden or earthen staircase. These double or triple lobed homes point towards an empty space, the interior courtyard. There is an external kitchen, built-in benches, chicken coops, small livestock, other small courtyards extend the space of each housing unit. As for the men's space, the men's symbol is the east, where the sun rises. This is the time when his workday starts outside of the compound. His home is a simple rectangular room with a flat roof, furnished with an earthen built-in bed. It is located in his first wife's courtyard. The bachelor's housing is round with a straw roof. It also functions as guest housing. The granary is conical with a straw roof. The local earthen building techniques, there are two of them. Cobb style, clay and straw mortar, using hand rolled balls of earth. This used to be used for everything, but nowadays is used for the granaries, external kitchens and chicken coops. The adobe style technique is used for the housing units. However, some homes are deteriorating and in some cases they're completely destroyed. Technical and sustainable solutions are needed while preserving the expertise. As in Niger, the Casina woman builders participate in the creation and application of coatings as well as the decorations which represent symbolic messaging. To start off, we decided to think about testing earthen coatings in an adobe building in the capital, Ouagadougou. Some of our team members are bachelor's degree architecture students. We tried out several mixes, some of which contained lime, in order to repair the cracks. We made three layers of coating. As we were satisfied with the results, we decided to share them with the Kasena women builders of the Tiebele Royal Court. We jointly organized a workshop to exchange techniques and research. We discussed and decided on a course of action. We made a preliminary visit to the Royal Court in order to view the premises and to determine the location of the educational building site. They're very organized. The Kasena women builder experts show us their expertise. Thanks to their participation, we restored in several stages a wall as well as the decorative symbols. There is a judicious choice of natural materials and simple tools. The materials that are usually used are natural. Clay, lateritic soil, black graphite earth, ash, cow dung, nere stalks, fibers, and leaves. The usual tools used by the women are a flat pebble, a bouquet of guinea fowl feathers used as a paintbrush, brushes, a sieve, a long broom, pots, and pestles. 
The implementation process for the protective coating follows the same stages as for meal preparation, and the general atmosphere is also similar to that of an outside meal preparation. Each type of ingredient represents one stage in the practice of the women builders. After removing and cleaning the wall surface, several layers of coating are applied. The first coating is made of cow dung, water, and gray clay. It is propelled onto the humidified wall and is then spread around by pressing it in with the palm of the hand and then smoothing it. The second coating is made of cow dung lateritic soil powder applied by pressing it on and smoothed by using a moistened flat pebble. The reliefs engraving is traced finely and smoothed with the same pebble as previously. As for paints, black paint is made with black graphite powder, which is natural carbon, mixed with slimy leaves. It's applied using the guinea fowl feather bouquet, either on or between the grooves. White paint is made with moistened limestone powder applied in chosen intervals between the areas painted in black. For waterproofing, Nere's stocks are boiled and pressed to make a liquid, which is propelled onto the wall, thus waterproofing it. All the decorations are symbolic forms representing elements of Casena daily life. Casena women builders perpetuate an expertise, thus guaranteeing the cult Casena cultural identity. After this process, we suggested testing new mixes with materials such as lime, gum arabic, and nere juice. Several tests were carried out. Thanks to the results, we have several promising avenues to follow. During our research workshop in the Royal Court, 100 young girls from 10 Tiebele Rural District High Schools also came to learn alongside the Casena female builders thanks to a competition called DORA, organized by the Dizeni Dani Association of Tiebele. The entire Tiebele Royal Court was filled with educational activities, transmitting expertise and methods for creating earthen coatings and decorations using natural pigments. It was a true intergenerational transmittal, interrelational and humanistic in a folkloric atmosphere. Traditional songs and dances accompanied the entire process. We continue our research on solutions for coatings using local materials in the goal of preserving this earth architecture heritage. The restored walls respect the expertise of the women builders. They would like to continue working with us in the search for solutions to better preserve this site from the effects of climatic and anthropogenic changes. We are but at the beginning of a wonderful human and heritage-related adventure. The expertise of women builders deserves to be known, promoted, and supported it proves their ingenuity and their creativity as much in research as in transmittal of knowledge. It contributes to safeguard heritage that is material as well as intangible. <laughs>
um, I'm going to start with, with our panel in terms of questions. Um, I have no question. Yeah. So um, are we ready? I'm trying to. Should I go Matt ahead? Yeah. OK, OK, Sandy, yes, yeah, please. Um, I had this similar question uh, when this film was presented at the University of Vermont. Two questions. One, is this a structure that is more conducive to a rural space rather than an urban space? Or is it architecture and structure that could be adapted to an urban space? That alors, tu con oui, je, ah, je vais continuer. Oui. Oui, okay. um, alors, comme architecture, on peut adapter à l'urbanisation ou c'est principalement pour des, un paysage rural? Euh, non, c'est les deux. On peut, on peut très bien adapter cette architecture euh, dans la ville parce que c'est... Il y avait, il y a encore même dans la ville ce type d'architecture un peu moins aujourd'hui, mais quoi, quand j'ai connu Ouagadougou il y a 20 ans, il y avait toutes ces architectures dans la ville. Et, et donc, euh, ce village, c'est une cour royale. C'est euh, à l'époque, il y a 20 ans, quand on, on entrait dans, la, dans, dans le village, on voyait encore beaucoup, beaucoup de maisons. Aujourd'hui, avec euh, l'avènement du, 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 de l'urbanisation et surtout le, le matériau ciment, parce qu'on a toujours dit que la terre n'était pas, pas bonne pour la construction. Euh, les gens ont, ont de plus en plus abandonné cette pratique architecturale pour faire euh, des, bon, une architecture moderne, mais qui n'est pas du tout adaptée. Et, et on revient 20, 25 ans aujourd'hui à, à, cette, à cette architecture qui, effectivement, peut, peut s'adapter très facilement sur, dans la ville, etc. Et... So, je, je traduis un petit peu, mm -hmm. puis tu continues. Okay. So, uh, um, there, there was a lot explained, mm -hmm. but, but um, yes, the, the existing cities 20 years ago had more of this architecture still intact within the cities. And it's been the loss of that that's also been part of the, the loss of the heritage, du patrimoine. Um, but the, the part of the point of the film is to show the heritage and to learn from that so that it can be adapted into urbanized situations. Um, and especially because the competition is concrete structures, this is a lot mm safer construction in terms of adapting to climate and um, a much better situation. Um, but but over, over these recent years, of course, with urbanization, the pressure has been to do other things than this. And so the old structures have fallen down a little bit um, and been abandoned in certain cases. Mm -hmm. C'est à peu près. Uh, but uh, I may, uh, uh... Uh, add that you know uh, this also uh, is a problem of having uh, a conversation between mm -hmm. the two worlds mm -hmm. these are ancient techniques mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. been preserved in uh, in a rural area for yes. most of them and then in the beginning of urbanization in africa mm -hmm. but if you've seen in the movies they were architects students architects mm -hmm. meaning that they are also open to new techniques. So there is a need for a conversation between the two, but most of the countries were under colonization. Attends, yeah. je tradu yeah. tu traduis, yeah. oui, yeah. okay. No, j'ai compris. Right. So, okay. so uh, the problem is, uh, uh, for a long time, those techniques were considered mm -hmm. not, you know, uh, not modern. modern. Well, and uh, like had like that idea of an awkward world, mm -hmm. you know, from the past. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then everybody went into concrete, but everybody went also into concrete because the French companies, when it comes to the French colonial power, I mean, empire, the English companies mm -hmm. were there also to sell, you know, everything that is around concrete. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, you know, architecture was only about the way it's built in the Western world and looking at your own ways of building as something that is not acceptable. Now we hope that the new generation of architects 
will bring that material, uh, these materials that were there also because, you know, if you live on, in those uh, uh, huts or in those houses, they w- there's no need for an uh, air conditioning system. Well, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the, the, the shifting world that we're all having to fight and work with. Yeah. You had another question? Yeah, the other question was, um, it seems that this is more like communal space uh, and architecture for a community rather than, for instance, in this country, architecture is often based on, and housing in village, uh, villages are based on private property, a single house for a single family rather than an extended family. Um, so is this more like a communal the building of a real community or communal space rather than the kind of Western tradition of everybody in their own house um, and in their own space uh, and a nuclear family structure rather than an extended family structure? Tu comprends un peu la question. Et aussi, si c'est pas seulement si c'est communal comme, comme um, du début en, 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 en pratique, mais, mais de conscience um, en comparaison à, à l'architecture um, oh, quoi, oui. moderne où, où c'est principalement chacun et c'est très privé. Très privé. Très privé. Oui. oui. Um... Alors, dans, dans les villages, euh, aujourd'hui, je, la communauté existe, ça c'est sûr, mais on a tendance aujourd'hui à, à devenir aussi individualiste. Donc, on a sa maison, on, euh, même si c'est ouvert, il y a un semi-ouvert. C'est-à-dire qu'avec euh, euh, le développement des villes, on, on, chacun a sa maison, la grande barrière, et, et on s'enferme. Bon, point de vue sécurité peut-être. Et comme je disais tout à l'heure, moi j'ai, je, j'ai connu mon village qui est devenu un grand quartier populaire euh, au, à Douala, au, au Cameroun. Et, et, et à, il y a 20 ans, on n'avait pas les barrières. On rentrait d'une maison à une autre, etc. On allait chez Tonton. Et, et, et la, la ville, les populations sont venues. Euh, la ville s'est, s'est développée. Et, et, et aujourd'hui, on a les barrières. Mm-hmm. Mais c'est notre village, même si bien qu'il soit populaire. C'est, c'est, pour nous, c'est notre village, mais c'est un quartier populaire aujourd'hui. Et donc, c'est ça qui se passe. Et, et pourquoi... pourquoi je traduis ce... un petit peu. Oui. Autrement, je, je perds la... Oui. Oui. The, the, I, I lose the thread. If, yeah. um, so, 20 years ago, for example, um, where Amélie lived, Um, there weren't any any barriers. There weren't any walls. There were there weren't any separations, and you could um, go next door. You could go in and out of of your familial zone as well as as your greater neighborhood zone. Um, and now, of course, all that privatization has come in, um, and and there are many reasons for it. But there is that that push towards individuality that's that's taken hold as well. Uh-huh. Um, and um, oui, tu peux continuer. Pourquoi c'est venu un peu comme ça? Il y a eu l'urbanisation qui, qui, qui est là, mais toujours est-il que bon, moi je, vais, je traverse la route pour aller chez le grand-père et, et dans la famille, dans la maison du grand-père, on, on a des générations, on a le, l'oncle, on a les enfants, mes cousins, mes, etc. Donc il y a quand même la cellule familiale qui reste toujours. Même si on est dans la vie, on a quand même cette fa- cellule familiale qui a été là parce que nous sommes des autochtones. Euh, pourquoi, pourquoi aussi ce travail c'est, c'est pour dire que dans, dans beaucoup d'écoles d'architecture, euh, moi j'ai, j'ai fait mes études en France et on n'a pas eu l'occasion de, de discuter avec cette architecture, nous étant jeunes étudiants, et, et j'avais besoin de, de, de connaître les techniques de construction pour pouvoir justement aller vers une architecture durable, euh, identitaire, euh, sociale, sociale et culturelle, et que cette ville africaine s- s- soit 
aussi représentative de son patrimoine. Mm -hmm. um, um, at, at one Um, the proximity of her family nucleus was was very intact and, and the relationship with grandparents and so forth. But as she um, went and studied in France, um, architectural studies aren't based mm -hmm. on this kind of, of heritage. Um, and you lose your identity when you enter into another system And it's all about that. And as an architect, I do know that myself, that you're trained a certain way. <coughs> and while you're in school, you can't really question that training. So it takes a moment for you to go back and reclaim who you are. And in this case, you go back and you reclaim your own family heritage and, and your systems within, within the um, countryside that you grew up in. And you bring that forward, and that becomes the conversation between the past and the future. Yes. Yeah. But I think, you know, all civilizations, even the Western world, have gone through different stages. Of course. Uh, you know, uh, in, in Europe or in Asia, if you go to, uh, to uh, Greece, you still have these houses that, you know, take you back in time. But everywhere, people have had the luxury to decide how to evolve. You know, mm, uh, no, I would not have say they? everywhere. No, I mean, yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow, they? Uh, somehow, like in Africa, this discussion between the past and the, the, the future or today has not been uh, made because at some point there was an accident, which was colonization which came an accident. to, you know, so, uh, and all the friends that I've yeah. had <laughs> who are architects have learned the way it's you built today, but they were not given the chance to make, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to take these ancient techniques and to go to the new, uh, modern world with, with it. Uh, it's not that Africa wants only to build this way. No. We want to, you know, build the modern way, but using these techniques, using these material freely. Or the without, knowledge. Yeah, or the knowledge, you know, without being uh, told that you are, <coughs> you know, uh, a bank <laughs> of savages who are in the past mm -hmm. and just, you know, using mud or clay we could build a new city that is in between, you know, it's a mix of, you know, all the, the techniques that, you know, we learn today, you know, freely. It's a matter of sovereignty. It's important in developing your own city. Otherwise... Right, so, Eric, so yeah. let me I just... There we have that situation with hey. other examples. Or, no, and I want to also see if any audience questions. Um, But um, like I think of Paolo Soleri in the southwestern mm -hmm. desert of the U.S. Mm -hmm. He too isn't accepted, and he was trying to build a future called an arch arcology, um, and using new techniques, old techniques. Um, it's not accepted in the West, right? Just exactly. as it's right. not accepted exactly. in other places yeah. too. Right. Yeah. So I think that that pushback is valid. But it, it engages all of us. Yeah. It engages all yes. of us. Because yeah. um, uh, people in the West, including in the United States, have not been allowed either to form their own structures or their own communities. Essentially, the rich, or the, I shouldn't say that. I suppose our economic system has shaped how we live. Mm -hmm. And that's an economic s system that also shapes people in the West as much as people, not as much probably as the people in Africa, because Africa is loaded down with colonialization. But it's not like Western peoples have been allowed to develop their own architecture or community either. But in the case either. of Africa, so, you okay, have like I, both colonialism yes, yes. and the economic system. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So right. it's a brutal, right. you know, right. you know uh, like situation for, you know, any architecture, Uh, school or, or, or writing or everything, or everything to emerge. Everything, right. Okay. So, so oui, et ce que je voulais rajouter aussi, c'est pourquoi aussi le focus avec les femmes, parce que oui. c'est important. 
euh, j ai, j ai, bon, dans ma formation, j'ai fait le génie civil avant, j'ai construit avant, donc j'ai fait une formation technique. Et, et quand j'ai fait mon bac, ma première, mon, en première, je n'ai pas pu aller dans un chantier parce que j'étais une femme. Et on est en France, on n'est pas, pas en Afrique. Et, et quand j'ai fait, je, je suis partie au, 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 au Burkina Faso, euh, j'ai vu l'organisation. Les hommes, euh, bon, dans ce cas euh, au Burkina, dans, dans la construction, parce, suivant les populations, parce que ce que je voulais aussi dire, c'est que l'Afrique a 40, 54 pays. L'Afrique noire, on a l'Afrique du Sud, on a oui. l'Afrique australe. Euh, bon. Donc, il faut qu'on sache que dans une région, la typologie architecturale n'est pas la même qu'à côté. Oui. Donc, on ne peut pas centraliser au Burkina, c'est l'Afrique. Non, ce n'est pas possible. Mm -hmm. C'est comme si je disais les États-Unis, c'est le Vermont. Voilà. Donc, okay. donc ça, ça, il faut, oui. faut qu'on qu qu accepte aussi de dire que l'Afrique a énormément de pays et que ce n'est pas un pays. Mm -hmm. Et, et donc, cette région qui est les Kassena du Burkina Faso... Attends, attends, je traite bien un petit peu. Okay, okay, okay. So, as a reminder, Africa is a continent right. and it has 49 countries. Right. And it's like saying that Vermont is the same as Southern California. And most of us know that that's not true. Thank and, we're, and we're states. And we're not even different countries. And the regional climatic differences and cultural differences across a, a continent are huge. But, but to circle back for a minute, Amélie, in 1989, 89, uh, okay, it was before that, okay. But at some point during her studies in France, um, because she was a woman, she wasn't allowed to do field work, site work. Um, on a, and she was also first in engineering before architecture. And that's part of the reason why coming back to the women that she met doing earth and construction was relevant is because they were women working on site, working with materials and working in, in building. Um, and so she learned from that a very different modality than was being pushed in France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. euh, aussi parce que euh, bon il y, y a que j'ai pas appris l'architecture africaine en, en Afrique euh, ouais. ou dans une école d'architecture euh, en Europe mais en tout cas pour moi il était important c'était ma question si je rentre en Afrique mm -hmm. dans un des pays quel type d'architecture je vais faire qui qui suis-je moi en tant qu'individu architecte mm -hmm. euh, femme africaine et, et qui aime les matériaux. Ouais. Et donc, pour moi, il, il, il me fallait que je sache qui je suis et c'est à travers cet échange avec les populations qui m'ont formé au départ sur l'architecture de terme et l'architecture de bambou, l'architecture écologique, que j'ai pu connaître cette conversation, avoir cette conversation avec euh, l'architecture africaine, en tout cas quelques typologies, les techniques, donc là c'est la terre, mais je connais le bambou, les feuilles, etc. Moi-même, dans ma culture au sud du Cameroun, euh, on, on construit avec les feuilles de bananier. Okay, donc okay. je suis aussi en train d'apprendre. Je perds un peu. Mm -hmm. um, donc pourquoi... Ouais. Euh, So, as an architect, she had to reclaim... J'avais besoin d'aller sur connaître les typologies architecturales, les savoir-faire, pour pouvoir avoir la conversation avec l'architecture moderne aujourd'hui. Mm -hmm. So, um, to, re, to, to, to learn, to do research on the different typologies of architecture within different regions of Africa allowed her to have the conversation with modern architecture and what might be adaptable, what might be relevant to the future within urbanization um, and in Africa, but I'd offer in other parts of the world too. And you did a special presentation um, back earlier this year in um, the Southwest um, um, 
uh, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and, and Taos, and um, had very intense conversations about those materials with the materials that you knew and the diversity of materials that you knew. It's interesting talking about the Southwest. Yeah. We have Beth that is asking, uh, est-ce que vous avez pu comparer, good French, Beth, est-ce que vous avez pu comparer ces techniques architecturales et décoratives avec celles qui se trouvent au uh, sud des États-Unis? Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, we, I'm we, impressed we that you can read that <laughs> from here. <laughs> is that That's good. Uh, Beth Sachs? Yes. 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 Okay. Oh, that's Steve. Oh, that's Steve, oh. Oh, All right. Steve Bishop. <laughs> okay. So the question yeah. is is um, that connection with the Southwest and yes. Um, yes, I make a, a workshop. We, uh, je fais un workshop uh, dans le cadre du, du, du congrès Terra en juin, mm -hmm. et c'était les mêmes techniques. Mm -hmm. And she presented her film as well as in Albuquerque and, and um, had a great reception about the film. And people were very keen on, uh, on the workshop as well. And you had people um, mixing the adobe and, and also the, the bull, the um, cob. The cob. Yeah. Sauf les techniques de restauration, de... de et dans Dieu, mais pas, pas les décorations, on n'a pas eu le temps. But they didn't have time for the decorations. J'ai fait un petit workshop avec euh, la gomme arabique que j'ai amenée. Et puis, oh, that's right. But she did bring gum arabic um, to mix with different um, colors and, and create the, the enduit, the, the, the skim, finishing. what would you call it, finishing. the finish? Finishing. Yeah. Um, and, and yet they didn't actually apply that entirely. Yeah. Moving forward. Joan, do you have a question? Do you have a comment? <laughs> no, I have admiration. <laughs> oh, we have a, I love yeah, okay. yeah, no. Another, no, no, it's like the same. But my question is, how do you now we move forward? Because we're living in a very interesting time, which is, you know, everybody now thinks about climate change, mm. how to adapt to climate change. And it looks like these people knew already you know how to adapt to the climate and you know by you know using clay or, or you know the earth to, to build how can we use it how could we bring it in our new world and how can the conversation be as you said not mm -hmm. only a conversation among africans but a conversation mm -hmm. like around the world mm -hmm. and how these techniques can be used for uh, to adapt and by i mean you know to climate change yes um You know, il y a un tiers de la population dans le monde qui, construit, qui habite dans une maison écologique en terre. Ça, il faut que les gens le sachent. So, a third of the world already lives in right. earthen, climate-adapted construction. A third? A third. Yeah. A third. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's very... developing countries, correct? Yes. yes. It's around, yeah. The, yeah, right. I'll just add, it's around the Mediterranean basin. Right. Mm -hmm. It's in one of the plateaus in China. Um, this is something that I did a lot of studies on. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I've followed it, and it's surprising how much of it exists, mm -hmm. but we just don't see it. And we don't see it in our um, you know, magazines and illustrations. And, and certainly, we really don't see any of the adapted, sustainable um, ways of living in any of our movies. Mm -hmm. It's not in the media. Oui, mais aujourd'hui, on, on commence parce que ça fait depuis une dizaine d'années, euh, il y a énormément de constructions en terre qui se font, en tout cas en France que je connais. Euh, beaucoup, euh, les Jeux Olympiques 2024 euh, pr présentent ça. Euh, énormément d'études de, 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 sur l'architecture de terre. En, en Europe, euh, particulièrement okay. en Afrique, en France que je connais. Et, et c'est assez intéressant parce que ça fait 20 ans, euh, moi j'ai fait un projet, une bibliothèque en terre, hein, il y a 25 ans, tu, mon diplôme, on m'a dit, ah non, c'est pas possible, it's not possible because it is earth architecture, it's uh, no, we have... <laughs> And so, now, France, so, yeah. so, so France has been experimenting, and I know that even from the 70s, with rammed earth. Um, but she did a project 25 years ago for a library in France with rammed in, earth. In Burkina Faso, too. In, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, in Africa in, or yes, France? In Africa, in, um, in Burkina Faso. Right. Um, 
but I, but they, we ha we do see this different places. It's just not changing the landscape of what we know. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, so but I think also, that's why this is interesting, is because it's bringing it forward as a as a conversation to affect mm -hmm. our expectations and as currently a way to rethink what we're doing in terms of climate. Right. So we have just a couple minutes left. Do we have any other questions from um, uh, the no, folks? Ben, yeah, sucks. Okay. <laughs> I think I may have heard my neighbor mention, oh. was there a question, but, you know, we thought, you know, we, we had to, uh, you know, we thought about you, just yeah. thinking about you. Yeah, Tell okay. So, the dernier mot avant que c'est fini. Le dernier mot, c'est merci, merci. À la... Merci. Thank you, merci. thank you merci. so much. Et, um, le, le projet, en anglais, j'ai perdu mes mots. Yeah. Et très émouvant et émotif. Mais je voulais remercier euh, les populations oui. qui m'ont accueilli et, et tous ceux qui m'ont aidé parce que ce film est fait de, bout, de, de petites mains et, et pas de subvention du tout. Donc, euh, voilà, je, je souhaite continuer parce que c'est ça aussi d'être avec vous. Comment continuer à, à travailler sur cette thématique qui est mondiale, mm -hmm. architecture d'aujourd'hui, changement climatique, euh, préservation d'un patrimoine, mais mettre les, les gens aussi dans des, condi des bonnes conditions de vie et l'économie, parce mm -hmm. qu'on ne peut pas préserver, faire du patrimoine sans penser aussi à l'économie, pour que les gens mangent. Et, et donc c'est tout ça, et je, je pense à ce continent qui est merveilleux, et que je... Ce qui montre aussi la beauté du continent, parce que je suis resté, on dit qu'on est pauvre, on n'a pas de culture, j'ai toujours entendu ça, et, et aujourd'hui, on peut participer à l'architecture écologique à travers ces savoir-faire. Merci. Thank you. I'll start with, yeah. with, the, with the tale of that. So bringing beauty back into yes. things, yes. which we tend to forget to do, especially when we're worried about economic things or transfer of technologies. But the beauty of Africa is critical um, to know because it's very vibrant and it's part of its spiritual existence, si je peux ajouter, oui, which we've talked about a lot, the spiritual existence of, of some of this making of earth and architecture. Um, but all of that goes to um, a very critical thanking by Emily of the women, the peoples that she worked with through these projects and over this time, because without them, this wouldn't exist. And um, as much as thanking everyone in Vermont that she's met, it's really about the women that she worked with. And um, what the film represents is many, many hands coming together to make it. There was no support for making the film. It was really done by individuals coming together and, and Amélie's talent and, and courage. Right. And we really yeah. thank you for being here with us and hope you come back soon. Yes. Eric, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to have like an architect also coming from yes. Africa because we tend to think that Africa only provides refugees mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. that are, you know, plagued by war. We have think people that want to participate in the universal, in the uh, global debate. It is time now that, you know, we stop militarism and then we start discussing as brothers and sisters because we have a fantastic, it's, it's urgent, but we have a fantastic opportunity to do that is how to battle climate change, how to bring back peace. It's important that, you know, we, we, yeah. we open that discussion. And also, Vicky hopes to do that, correct? Well, the Vermont okay. Institute of Community and International Involvement really thanks you for coming. Uh, this is okay. a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Okay. And our little Vicky will be back soon with other interesting and uh, presentations about beauty. So join us soon. Thank you.